Guys, just just so just so you understand, your class rank is not that important. I mean, it's important for you to get into a college, but here's here's the great thing. Just so y'all understand, right? I'm I'm gonna sound really arrogant here for a minute. I'm I'm really really intelligent, right? And I have like five degrees at this point in my life. I, I graduated 780th or something in my class. 718th. Like 840. No, in California. No, in West Virginia, I would have graduated like first in my class. Have you met people from West Virginia? Here, and, and, I, and I, I tell you this to explain this to you. Like, listen to me. You are you are so young at this point in your life. You have done nothing that like is detrimental to your long term future, right? Like, you have not you have not screwed up your future at this point. You have. You're fine. Yeah. All right. Lovely. Um, did we get through Johnson? Maybe. Maybe the second worst president. We got through this. Um, we okay, but I, I know so I know that we got to this right. Like we talked about the radical Republicans, right? Johnson and the radical Republicans are going to battle with one another. They're going to like clash. Johnson wants to be in control. The radical Republicans want to be in control. Um, Johnson is is again. He's still a Southerner. He's still a terrible human being. He's still racist as all get out, right? Um, he doesn't want the Freedmen's Bureau. He actually vetoes funding for the Freedmen's Bureau. The radical Republicans don't have the two-thirds majority to override that veto, right? Um, Congress does pass a Civil Rights Act, though, that grants citizenship to people. Um, Johnson doesn't like that black people get citizenship, right? He doesn't. He doesn't want that. Um, ultimately, um, a lot of the battles that occur here, Johnson is going to look worse and worse and worse and pettier and pettier and pettier. And pettier. Um, and it's going to be detrimental to Johnson's sort of political um, prestige, support, authority, whatever. People are unhappy with Johnson, right? Um, and so that's going to afford Congress the opportunity to really take charge, and Congress is going to begin to oversee Reconstruction. They're going to actually create military Reconstruction, which is going to take Union troops and put them in southern states. And essentially, essentially, it is the definition of martial law. Do you know what martial law is? It's yeah. It's basically military law. The military is in control, right? Um, it puts civilians underneath the authority of the military, and the military can dictate behaviors. They can put things into a place that are that are that are just massive violations of like freedom and autonomy that we think of in terms of America, right? Like you can have a curfew. Or under, under martial law where you are not allowed to be out after sundown for instance right like that is a that is a, a civil liberty violation in reality yes we understand that okay um <coughs> excuse me so um as a part of military reconstruction uh, again um we're now going to add the 14th amendment as a necessary ratif the ratification of the 14th amendment is a necessary step in returning to the union, right? So now states are gonna have to ratify the 13th and the 14th in order to get back into the union. All right, um, Ulysses S. Grant is the general whom everything goes through because that's who the president is is, is dealing with, right? Um, and then the Senate and the, the United States Congress is gonna to try to exert a little bit more authority um, also as it pertains to presidential behaviors, right? They're gonna to try to make sure that the president can't like fire people um, just because he's unhappy with them, right? This is very much like a, a pissing match between two people to see who is actually in control and who actually has the authority. Right? And the reality is, is Congress is going to win this, okay? Right, when we go back and we look at American history up until this point, we should understand that there have really only been two presidents in American history at this point in time who have sort of exerted significant control, right, and acted in a more authoritarian manner than what the Constitution dictated, right? And that's Andrew Jackson and Abraham Lincoln. 
Okay? And we generally give Lincoln a pass because that happens during a time of war and presidents get like war powers that, that, that they just get. Okay? Um, this leads to some significant social changes in the South as a result of all of this. Okay? Um, when radical reconstruction begins, right, and we have Union troops stationed in the South, Union troops are going to utilize their federal authority, right, to help protect things like civil rights. Okay? There was a, a statement on, on a slide or two before, right, that, that Congress had actually passed a Civil Rights Act. Right? That's part of what provided citizenship to uh, all black people. Right? We go a step further and the 14th Amendment actually has a citizenship clause in it that says anybody born in the United States or naturalized to the United States is a citizen of the U.S. and the state that they live in, other than Indians. Right? Indians are not. No, no. Indians do not become citizens until like the mid-1900s. You understand that? Like Native Americans have been US citizens for less than a hundred years. Less than a hundred years, okay? Um, but we are going to do a lot for the former slaves here initially, okay? Um, so as the radical Republicans and the Union Army is exerting control, black people are getting the authority to vote, they're getting the right to vote, and that right is being protected. Right? You have union troops that are, that are going to polling locations to ensure that black people are afforded their constitutional right to vote. Right? That leads to black people being elected to state legislatures. That leads to black people being elected to um, Congress from the South. Right? Like we have actual representatives, uh, black representatives from Southern states as a direct result of um, sort of Republican control of reconstruction and the military ensuring that civil rights are being protected. And okay? now what happens in the South is that the South is essentially going to use radical reconstruction as the justification for a smaller aspect of the cause of the war, right? So when we go back to the causes of the war, right, there's this sort of mentality that, oh, the North is trying to like control us and been, the North is tyrannical over the South and the South, we just want to live our lives. Like we don't, we don't want to be influenced by the North. The North is trying to tell us what to do. Well, guess what? During reconstruction, that actually looks like it's a hundred percent true, doesn't it? Right? You have all sorts of Northerners, right? And actually that's called carpetbaggers, right? Carpetbaggers are people that, that came from the North, right? And they come down to the south and they set up businesses and they like start sort of trying to influence society and culture in the south you have the union army that's dictating all sorts of behavior right and so now right we have this myth of the lost cause where the war was really it's really about it's the war of northern aggression like have you ever heard that term because that still gets thrown around in like southern places now right that the, the, the Civil War is the war of Northern aggression. That's what Southerners call it, okay? Which is obviously a very loaded political ideology, yes? All right, um, additionally, we're gonna see the creation of the KKK, or the Ku Klux Klan, okay? So uh, there was a, a Confederate general named Nedford, Ned, Nathan Bedford Forrest, Right? This is the dude Forrest Gump is named after. Go watch the movie. His mom even tells him, like, sometimes people make bad mistakes and that's okay. But, like, you can still be a good, whatever. Anyway, I don't care about the movie. Okay? But, yeah, this is where Forrest gets his name from. Is Nathan Bedford Forrest. Right? There's even a part in the movie where he talks to his horse companies like slow. He was like, they used to dress up in their bed sheets and ride around on their horses. Okay. Um, so the KKK is created. The KKK is, by definition, you cannot provide a different definition, is a terrorist organization. You understand that? Okay. Terrorist organizations are organizations that utilize terror tactics, right? That means that they are trying to scare you into behaving in a manner in which they want you to behave. 
okay? And therefore, they're gonna utilize a lot of tactics. Some of them are downright like murderous, yes? Okay, uh, the KKK is going to be responsible for things like lynchings and killings, okay? Um, but sometimes it's not actual like violence, right? Um, but it's just a threat of violence, okay? Um, and so that is by definition a terroristic uh, behavior, a terroristic tactic, right? And so these are the people that then become sort of the redeemers, right? Um, again, that's sort of another vocab term that you need to be aware of. Redeemers are those people that want to restore the South to its former glory, right? Because the South was a wonderful agrarian place. Again, remember, like, we fed the slaves, and we loved the slaves, and we cared for them like they were family, right? And because these people actually believe this, like they buy into this mentality, this narrative, right? Um, which is what is, has further created all sorts of issues within American culture and society over the years, right? Because you have people that genuinely believe, like, oh, slavery wasn't that bad, right? Um, and then the other group of people that you need to be aware of are the scallywags. Scallywags were just the uh, Southerners who were opposed to secession, right? Um, these are essentially your, your, they would probably be, be, be referred to as race trading Southerners, right? Um, the black people would not have been scallywags, just so you understand, right? Like if you were a free black man in the South, you would not really have been referred to as a scallywag. You would have been referred to as another word that I'm not going to say. Right, um, but like, like you would have been treated uh, after the war is over. You would have been treated the exact same way that our our, our freed slaves are treated. Right, uh, it did, doesn't matter that you were free before the war, and it, like, no, you just lumped in with all those people that are now free. Right, the scallywags would have been your southern whites that, for whatever reason, are not in favor of secession um, and are more union sympathizers. Okay. Um, the South or Southern states are going to pass what are called black codes, right? And eventually we're gonna learn these to be called Jim Crow laws, okay? Um, these are laws that are put in place that are aimed at recreating antebellum Southern culture, right? Um, this is actually part of the problem that we have with uh, Civil War amendments, right? If we go back to the 13th Amendment, right? And I, and I talk about this in my government class some, right? Um, the 13th Amendment is terrible. You all understand that? You know the 13th Amendment in slavery, yes? Yeah. Not wrong. Right? Because right here it says the 13th Amendment, neither slavery nor involuntary servitude except as a punishment for crime blah, 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 shall exist within the United States. So guess what we can do? Because we've got a legal loophole now, right? I'm gonna create black codes, I'm gonna create Jim Crow laws. Some of those Jim Crow laws are things like black people have to have a job, right? Black people are not allowed to walk down the street on Sundays. What, what? yes, exactly. They're ridiculous laws. Because then what happens? Right? We're able to round black people up, throw them in prison, and then guess what the prison does? The prison leases them out to plantations as slave labor. We have recreated slavery legally, constitutionally. <coughs> Okay, that, that is wildly problematic. It is, a, it, is a, it is a huge flaw to the 13th Amendment, right? Uh, the reality is if I could ever fix the Constitution, like if you gave me one, one shot at fixing the Constitution, that would be what I did. I would remove that except for punishment of a crime. So like you could still do that now? Yes, prisoners can still be put to work now. There are a number of prisons in the United States where that still happened. Back in the 1980s, license plates were made in prisons. Yeah, like a dollar an hour. And, and, you, and you basically can only exchange that for commissary, 
right? Where like, if you're in a women's prison, right? You have to purchase your own tampons. Because you're a woman and they're their voice and they don't understand. They don't, they don't understand the struggle. I, I have two little sisters and a wife, yes. I mean, not not like, I'm not going to sit there and mansplain it to a woman, no. But like, but it is it is always common. You'll ever see like the videos where they go around in like public and they ask men like, how many, how many like feminine products does a woman use during her cycle? And they're like, uh... Like six? Six? I think six. I think this is right. Oh, no. Six Six is six is not right, gentlemen. Not not for a whole cycle. No. Not accurate. Okay. Um, so this gets into the convict leasing system, which is basically what I was just explaining, right? White people are going to be sent to work on black uh, sorry. Black people are going to be sent to work on white farms. I got that backwards there for a second. Okay. Um, again, this is all aimed at trying to recreate the hierarchical racial structure that exists prior to the Civil War. Okay. The other thing that happens, and this is a cultural issue, right, is that you have a create the creation of what's called the sharecropping system. Now, I want you to understand, sharecropping is actually appealing to black people initially for two major reasons, right? One, if you were a former slave, right? You were a field hand in say Mississippi. What skills do you have in life? Farming. Farming, you don't grow cotton. That's, that's it, that's the only skill you got in life, right? So now you're free, you have an opportunity to get a job. What job do you wanna get? Farming, the one thing I know how to do so that I can theoretically make money and provide for myself and like, create a better quality of life, yes? That all makes sense, doesn't it? Okay, so that's one appeal to sharecropping. The second appeal to sharecropping, the way sharecropping works, right, is you have this plantation. So let's just say it was a 100 acre plantation, right, or a thousand, let's say it was a thousand acre plantation, right? What we're gonna do is we're gonna divide that into 50 acre plots, okay? So if my math is good, that should be 20, yes? 20, 50 acre plants, my math good, Tyler? I don't do math very well, right? Right, 50 times 20 is 1,000? Okay, wonderful. So we're gonna create 50 acre plots, okay? And we're gonna rent those out. Like if you're the plantation owner, because now you, you have 1,000 acres, but you ain't got nobody to work it, right? So as the plantation owner, like you also need sharecropping because I need, I need people to come work for me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give the, the former slave 50 acres, right? And he is gonna work that 50 acres. Well, guess what that also does for the former slave? Well, we would hope, but no, right? And we'll see why, no, why it doesn't happen here in a second, right? But they're renting that land. Where's the oversight? Do they have a slave master? Do they have a driver? Remember that term, the driver? Right? Is there somebody there with a whip, like cracking that whip and beating them and making them move faster? No, sharecroppers are not at the sort of whim of uh, uh, um, white people, right? Like they, they, they are existing um, sort of generally free from white oversight or white control of their day-to-day -day lives. Now, if they go to work in a factory, Right? If they want to go to work in a textile mill, for instance, that's not true. Right? They have a white boss. There's some sort of middle management guy that's standing over their shoulder watching them work. So sharecropping is advantageous for those two reasons, right? A little bit of freedom and they already know how to do it. But here's the problem, right? If we get into a sharecropping situation, you are the former slave and all of a sudden you have your freedom, you're gonna go sharecrop, right? What do you need in order to get started? C, what else do you need? Tools, what else do you need? Well, you're getting the land, that's what sharecropping is. But in addition to the land, right, you need C, yes. You need tools, yes. What else do you need? 
No, you're doing the work. Shelter. Food. Clothing. Right? Like those three things were things that were provided to them as slaves. Right? But now they have to pay for it. But they don't have no money. So how are they buying it? Credit. Right? Who are they getting the credit from? The plantation owner. Oh, crap. Wait, uh, Mr. Baker, wasn't the food shelter and clothing coming from the Freedmen's Bureau? They were helping some, but that doesn't mean that the Freedmen's Bureau had the budget to provide food, shelter, and clothing for everybody. You're talking about millions of now freed peoples. Yes, the, the, the Freedmen's Bureau is essentially charity. <coughs> they are helping some, but not like, they, they, they can't provide all the help, right? So this is basically how it works, right? You see right there in the top middle, right? The sharecropper gets land and seed, right? But then he's got to buy food and clothing on credit. He plants the crop. He gives the crop to the sharecropper, to the, to the landowner to go and sell for him. Right? By the way, you think he's getting a fair price in that one? No. Right? Because that's a middleman. He's going to take a cut for selling it for him. Right? Plus, he then gets a portion of that to sell on his own. Right? And then, come the end of the harvest year, they go to settle up. Right? And the plantation owner is like, hey, you owe me X number of dollars for food, for clothing, for shelter, for this, for this, for this, for this, for this. And the sharecropper's like, I didn't, I didn't, make, I didn't make that much. So now what happens? The sharecropper is in debt. Okay? He owes that plantation owner more money. So what does he have to do? He has to promise him more of the crop that he grows the next year. Right? So at that point, let's just be smart about it. Let's work harder. Right? Like that makes sense. I'm just going to grow more. I'm going to squeeze a third round of like crops into what I'm growing. Yes. And then what does that do? Basic supply and demand. I create a whole much, a whole bunch more cotton, right? I grow a whole bunch more cotton. What happens to the price of cotton? It goes down significantly. So now I grew all of this extra product and I didn't actually make any more money. Because when I used to sell, sell a bale of cotton for say $5, now I doubled my production, but I'm selling every bale of cotton for 250. That means I, I'm coming out with the exact same amount of money. And Right? One of the reasons why sharecropping ends up being absolutely terrible. Because what happens is once they are in debt to that landowner, they, 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 they are now tied to the land. They cannot leave. They cannot leave until they pay off their debt. And if they don't pay off their debt and they try to leave, guess what happens? Jail. Jail. You're going to debtor's prison. And now guess what happens once you're in debtor's prison? You're a slave. Because the 13th Amendment allows that behavior to still occur. Right? So you would either not make money or you would make money. Basically, either way, you're not making money. Either way, you're not making money after <coughs> in a sharecropping system. This is actually one of the significant downsides to agrarian cultures, right? Because think, think about this for a second. Let's say, let's say I'm Apple, right? And I, I produce too many MacBooks, right? What do I do? No, I'm gonna put them in a storage house somewhere. I'm gonna store them. Why? Because that way, if there's only 500 MacBooks that are for sale right now, what happens to the price? Price goes up because some of you are just addicted to your MacBooks and think it's the greatest computer ever. Therefore, you need a MacBook, right? 
So you're willing to pay more for your MacBook, right? But you are not aware that Apple overproduced. And so then Apple keeps all of those in a warehouse somewhere. And then the next time Apple can, Apple can sell them a, a year later, right? Oh, we've got another release of this new iPhone, you know, slightly updated new, brand new computer, brand new MacBook, right? People go out and buy it. Can I do that with corn? No. If the price of corn is too low, can I just throw it into a warehouse for a year and be like, I'll sell it a year from now when the price goes up? It, it would rot. Crops rot. If you don't believe me, go to the grocery store today after school. Buy some produce, set it on your counter for three weeks, come back and see what happened. I promise you, you're not going to want to eat it anymore. My mom would love that. Your mother would love that? Oh. Well, I don't know, maybe your mom composts. All right, 14th Amendment. The, you'll, we'll go over this in more detail next year. The 14th Amendment is arguably the most important amendment to the Constitution ever, period, like, period. Okay? It is an incredibly important amendment to the Constitution. I told you a minute ago it creates a citizenship clause, right? All freedmen are now citizens, right? All immigrants, right? If you're born in the United States, mom and dad are from Ireland, Right, they're fleeing Ireland because of the potato famine, right, in the mid 19th century, and okay? and you get to Ellis Island, and then mom has you a year later, a week later, right? You are an American citizen according to the 14th Amendment of the Constitution. They can't send Correct. Theoretically, yes, but I want you to understand, like. Nobody is in favor of that, right? Like even hardcore like nativists are not really in favor of kicking the mothers out, right? Unless you also kick the child out, okay? Because if you have if you have an Irish baby that's born in the United States to a mother who's Irish, right? And and then you decide like oh she needs to go back to Ireland, and the baby is two years old or a year old, right? And they're an American citizen because they were born in the United States. We can't deport the baby. So then what do we have to do if we deport mom? Deport the baby. They come back later, right? No, the, the, the baby goes into like foster care. And now my tax dollars have to raise that child. I'm not okay with that. Mom was perfectly capable of raising that baby. So mom can stay here and continue to work as a seamstress or a cook or whatever, or maid, I don't care, and raise her own child. Because I don't want to be burdened with that. I'm raising enough babies as it is. I don't want to raise your baby. Do we understand? So if you actually follow politics today, like there are certain people, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna name names, we can talk about this more next year, that are actually wanting to end birthright citizenship in the United States. Specifically to ensure that like if an immigrant comes here, right? Because here's the thing, I need you to understand, we're talking specifically like, like if you are an illegal immigrant, if you sneak across the Canadian border, right, like you're Russian, right, and you paddle across like into Alaska, right, and then you like give birth in Alaska, you, you understand that baby is a U.S. citizen even though you came here illegally and you're still Russian, yes? Okay, because that's what birthright citizenship is. There are people that want to see that ended specifically for like illegal immigrants, right? Like that Russian person that did not enter the United States with a, with a visa, with a green card, right? Um, I, I, I would hope, I would hope that the, the hardcore people that are trying to get rid of that policy don't wanna, like if you're here legally, you know what I'm saying? Like if you've got a green card and you come here legally, I hope they're not trying to like deport that child as well when mom was. I would hope, but I don't know. I, I don't have a lot of faith in humanity anymore. My, my faith is waning, unfortunately. All right, um, 14, uh, we just talked about the 14th Amendment, right? Um, we'll talk about it in a little bit more detail when we come back after Christmas. 
um, because the Supreme Court is not going to uphold some of these provisions in the 14th Amendment initially, right? But we do have a due process clause. We do have an equal protection clause. The 14th Amendment is designed to ensure that everybody is treated equally under the law, right? The election of 1866, uh, the radical Republicans win a, a majority in both houses. They're going to control pretty much everything uh, moving forward. They're actually going to go to impeach Andrew Johnson. Right? What was Andrew Johnson's crime? They didn't like him. Uh, no, I mean, here's, here's the problem. They actually impeach him because they don't like him. Right? Um, it, it's, not, it's not the best, it's not the best look. Right? Um, Andrew Johnson is the only president in the history of the United States that is impeached all the way up until the 1990s. Right, and then Bill Clinton gets impeached, and why was he impeached? What was his actual crime? He lied under oath. Right, he lied about cheating on his wife. Okay, I don't don't be shocked by that. If you get caught cheating on your wife, you would lie about it as well. Under oath? Uh, yes. Deny, deny, deny. I, I promise you, I promise you, if you cheat on your girlfriend someday and she catches you, you're going to be like, but what was that song from the 90s? Wasn't me, right? Like, she caught me red-handed? Wasn't me. Like, she saw me on the sofa? Wasn't me. She caught us in the shower? Wasn't me. Yeah, there was a whole song that I buy Shaggy, I think. Yeah, right? You, you can listen to the song when you're on the... But you're, you're going to lie about that. Right? That is not a high crime. That is not worthy of actual removal from office. So did they just not like him and then they found an excuse to like get rid of him? Bill Clinton? Yeah. No, I, th there were. Okay, so the 90s is a little interesting. There's a resurgence in the 1990s. What is it? Cockroach? I don't know. <laughs> is it a mouse? No. <laughs> It's a cricket? I'll oh, just kill the cricket. But I used to have mice in my classroom last year. Yeah. The George Ranch is right next to an open field. They've got all kinds of like mice. Dude, we found like a, a poisonous snake in the office one day. Oh, no. Oh, that's just a cricket. Leave it alone. I mean, I didn't leave it alone, but whatever. Okay. Continuing. So, look, what is what is what is John? What's Johnson's crime? He, he really doesn't have one, which is why it comes down. It actually comes down. So just so we understand, the way impeachment works, the House of Representatives is the one who impeaches a president. That means that they bring charges. The president committed a crime, right? Bill Clinton, the crime was perjury, right? He lied on his wife, right? Uh, lied about cheating on his wife, right? His wife and yeah. what? Wow. Yes. No, she had aspirations to become president of the United States herself, right? Um, and and and. And it's really hard. So, like, like, do you know who Tim Scott is? Tim Scott just quit his presidential campaign. He's a senator from South Carolina. And the thing that everybody talked about with Tim Scott is why is he single? Like, is he gay? Right? Like, like that. Like, not not what are his policies, but like, why is he a forty-something-year-old man and he's single? Right? Like, people ask questions. So no, they stayed together. Anyways. Right. Then once once you have been once you have been charged with the crime, which is what the House of Representatives does, it goes to the Senate and you are put on trial. When Johnson is put on trial in the Senate, he is not voted out. Basically by one vote. Right? And the guy who quits, right? And he's like, look, we can't we can't do this because there's not enough evidence and this is a terrible president to start, because then we're just gonna start impeaching people because we don't like them. Right? Why did we impeach Donald Trump? Because we didn't like him. So, we should do that. No, here's here's the thing. Like, if you actually go back and you look at, like, like you know what Donald Trump actually got impeached for the first time? Because they tried to impeach him twice. Do you know what his actual crime was the first time? He paused too long in a conversation. So the the whole thing the whole thing was whether or not whether or not Donald Trump was was looking for some sort of quid pro quo with Ukraine. Right? Ukraine was asking the United States for aid. Donald Trump was like, yeah, I'll give you aid. 
I want you to investigate this guy for like political corruption. Well, here's the thing. If we're gonna withhold aid unless Ukraine does that, that's quid pro quo and that's not okay. But like, was it a comma or a period? I will do this for you, period. I would like you to do this for me. That's not quid pro quo, right? I would like you to do this for me, comma, right? I'll do this for you. Well, that's quid pro quo. Can you tell when somebody is speaking if it's a comma or a period? No. 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 But we had a whole impeachment based solely off of that. Right? That, is, that was his, that literally is his first impeachment, is, is that. Okay? The second one was whether or not he actually created an insurrection or a riot on January 6th. Okay? And then that never even went to trial because they were like, what's the point? He's already out of office. Like he's, we're not going to remove him. Joe Biden is already the president of the United States. So the Senate was like, we're just not going to deal with this period. Like we're just not, we're not even, we're not even going to talk about it. So he technically wasn't even put on trial the second time. So can we do Joe Biden? So Joe Biden is under an impeachment inquiry right now as well. For what? Because his son is a foreign businessman. And so the Republicans are trying to be like, Hunter Biden took money from China and then he filtered it to his dad. And so Joe is actually like on the payroll for the Chinese and therefore he's like harming America. But you're not gonna prove that. So, so they're getting rid of Biden because of his son having his, his I, I mean, the Republicans are, are creating an impeachment process for Biden. I don't know. I mean, look, the Republicans control the House of Representatives. They'll probably vote on it and it'll go to the Senate and nothing will happen. And this, the Democrats control the Senate, so I would imagine they won't do anything. They won't even put Joe Biden on trial. Because unfortunately, it's all political now. And, and here, I mean, look, here's the thing. Have we found a smoking gun where Joe Biden has definitively done things wrong? No. No. But there's significant issues within government. And again, these are all conversations for next year because you understand that Donald Trump is under indictment right now for like mishandling classified documents, yes? Like that's one of the things that he's on trial for. Okay? They found classified documents in Joe Biden's garage next to his Corvette. Is, is he gonna go be put on trial? No, right? And here's the thing, just so you understand, it's not even a Republican Democrat thing because they caught Mike Pence with documents that he shouldn't have that were classified that he were not secure, right? Is anything gonna happen to Mike Pence? No, no. All right, let's get back, let's get back to, to what, we're, what we're doing. All right, so uh, by 1870, right, Republicans are in control of the South. They're gonna create the 15th Amendment, which is the city voting rights amendment for black people, right? Um, that's now going to be another requirement to get back in. Oh shoot, I think I'm missing a couple of slides at the very end of this, okay? Um, just so you understand, one, a lot of the civil rights and racial issues that are coming about right now are only applicable to black people, right? I already told you Native Americans don't become citizens until the 1950s, yes? Right? Well, also California, like they don't want the 14th and 15th amendments to apply to the Chinese, right? Because there's been a number of Chinese, we haven't really talked about Chinese immigration, right? But there's been a significant increase in Chinese immigration along the West Coast because Chinese individuals are coming over and they're actually working as laborers to help build the transcontinental railroad, which we haven't really talked about either, right? Um, but they're essentially like, menial laborers um, and they come over with their own like culture like hopefully you realize like Chinese culture and, and European culture are not the same right like, hopefully we understand that right they come over with their own culture and, and white people in, in, in California but uh, they don't they don't like that right like they're they're because the reality is 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 a lot of immigrants coming to the United States and they don't actually try to assimilate right um, and I think that if, if, if immigrants came here and tried to assimilate, people would probably be less, 
opposed to them, for lack of a better term. Yeah? All right. Um, so understand that. So the Chinese don't get a whole bunch of stuff uh, either. Reconstruction will end with the Compromise of 1877, right? Yeah, I, I don't know why that slide is missing. Um, but the, the Reconstruction ends with the Compromise of 1877. Rutherford B. Hayes and Samuel Tilden are running for president of the United States. Neither one of them gets a majority of the Electoral College. <coughs> There's some disagreement even about the validity of the election. Okay? And ultimately, the Democrats, who want Tilden to be the president, are going to let Rutherford B. Hayes win the election. They're going to certify the election results for Rutherford B. Hayes in return for the ending of Reconstruction and the removal of all troops from southern states. That ends Reconstruction essentially overnight. Now, there were some states that had already met the requirements and the troops had been moved out prior to that point, but we essentially do it overnight. That withdrawal of all of those troops and all of that Republican support is what creates really a power vacuum that allows the KKK and the Democrats to regain control in the South and then really implement those black codes and Jim Crow laws and create a segregated society that we will see all the way up until the 1950s. All right? So you have a quiz tonight.